Las Vegas, Sin City. It's one of the most iconic and well-known cities in the world. So how does a random valley in the middle of the Mojave Desert become a worldwide tourist destination with about 40 million visitors each year? It might surprise you that the answer has a lot to do with water. Allow me to explain. It all started in January of 1830 when a Mexican scout named Rafael Rivera came across the Las Vegas Valley while searching for water for a trading party led by Spanish explorer and trader Antonio Armijo. As the group was headed to Southern California, Rivera was the first non-native to lay eyes on a green desert oasis in a valley in the middle of the Mojave Desert, which he named Las Vegas, which roughly translates into the meadows. Groundwater, bubbling up to the surface, created lush, grassy meadows. Water, in several different ways, played a big role in the early development of Las Vegas. The Las Vegas Springs became an essential watering stop for people traveling from New Mexico to Southern California along the Old Spanish Trail. Fourteen years later, a U.S. military officer named John Fremont was exploring the West when he came across Las Vegas in his travels. Fremont, along with a group of well-armed troops, were on a mapping and spying expedition in the then Mexican territory, gathering information for a possible future invasion of the area. Fremont was in the Las Vegas Valley for less than a day, but his impact to the area would be large. Fremont had a way with words, and his journals of his expeditions west were captivating to the American public. His journal entry about Vegas and its springs brought some attention to the area that wasn't there before. The current-day American Southwest was a Mexican possession until the U.S. acquired it in 1848 in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo at the end of the Mexican-American War. The first settlement in the area was attempted by the Mormons in 1855, who constructed an adobe fort. The settlement didn't last long with the group of Mormons returning to Utah. Given its accessibility to water, Las Vegas became a railroad stop, spurring growth and more visitors in the early 1900s. In 1905, plots around the railroad station were auctioned off, establishing Las Vegas as a town. The following year, the first hotel and casino opened up, called Hotel Nevada, at 1 Fremont Street, with rooms only costing $1 a night. Hotel Nevada became the Golden Gate Hotel and Casino, which is still in existence today, making it the oldest hotel in Vegas. In 1910, Nevada banned gambling, but of course, a lot of illegal gambling still occurred. In the following decades, Las Vegas saw a slow but steady population increase to 2,304 in 1920 and 5,165 by 1930. In 1931, one of the most important events in the development of Las Vegas occurred, and once again, it centered around water. Construction of the Hoover Dam, originally called the Boulder Dam, started. The purpose of the dam was to control flooding along the Colorado River and, more importantly, provide a dependable water supply for the region along with hydroelectric power. The manpower needed for the dam's construction was massive. Four to 5,000 men worked on the dam daily, and a total of 21,000 worked on it from 1931 until its completion in 1936. This brought a whole bunch of men to the Las Vegas area. Nevada, suffering financially because of low population rates throughout the state, lifted its ban on gambling at the same time all these men were coming into the area to work. This led to casinos and other entertainment venues opening along Fremont Street. The Northern Club was the very first establishment in Las Vegas to receive a gambling license from the state of Nevada. After the end of Prohibition in 1933, both alcohol and gambling began to bring big money to Vegas. It might have been the Great Depression, but business was booming in Vegas. All this money attracted the eyes of the mob, who started to establish themselves in the city at the beginning of the 40s. By 1941, infamous gangster Bugsy Siegel was operating the Northern Club. That same year, the Las Vegas Strip was born, when Thomas Hull built the El Rancho Vegas on Highway 91. 
This area also eventually attracted Bugsy Siegel, who was having some local law enforcement issues and liked this area since it was just out of the city's jurisdiction at the time. He teamed up with Billy Wilkerson to build the Flamingo. The Flamingo, with its heavy mob influence, was the first of its kind in Vegas, a luxury hotel casino that offered the full Las Vegas experience, a luxurious setting with high-level entertainment and gambling. The Flamingo was turning a huge profit by the end of the 40s, attracting more mobsters and more casinos on the Strip, like the Frontier and the Sands. Back on Fremont Street, the Golden Nugget opened in 1946, and the massively popular Horseshoe Casino opened in 1951. In contrast to the mob's glitz and glamour casinos, the Horseshoe was all about gambling. Las Vegas was booming, and by 1954, had 8 million tourists a year. Casino owners took full advantage of the dirt cheap electricity coming from the Hoover Dam, putting up as many lights as they could to attract guests. Hotel owners also booked the top performers of the time. Throughout the decades, Las Vegas has continued to grow, with larger and larger mega resorts being built, replacing a lot of the original hotels and casinos, becoming the city it is today. Because of all this building and population growth, the one thing that started it all, its high water table in springs, has long since dried up, with the water table dropping over 300 feet in certain areas. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. Please subscribe for more historical videos. Take care.